Would you like to learn how to take any piece of art, turn it into a color scheme, select paint colors, and then turn it into your own art? Then stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Paper Rain. My name is Rachel Juanita and I'm the artist also known as Queen. And welcome to my YouTube channel if you're joining me from the Color Hop. Hi, Color Hop. I'm excited to share with you today a little tutorial on color. So first, let me be the first to admit, I am a color nerd. I love all things color. Color is such a huge element in my art. And so when I saw the opportunity, I was like, yeah, of course I'll join in. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about color. And, um, but then I got like kind of stuck, right? Like, whoa, I have a whole course on color. Um, but I said, you know what? I'm going to give away one of my best secrets about color. So if you want to know my best secret, stay tuned and because i'm going to show you how i make uh, okay i can't i can't give it all away because i i can't give the mocks away i need you to watch so that you'll see what the secret is okay so scenario and i'll if you see if you can relate um you come to your work and you're real excited you got some new supplies maybe you got a new stencil or a new stamp Okay, maybe it's just me. But you get some new supplies and you come to work. And then it's like, oh my gosh, if you're like me, you have all the colors. <laughs> you have all the paints. And so it's like, whoa, well, where do I go? And so what I like to do is I like to rely on this little handy dandy tool that I have developed. And um, because it takes one step out of the process, right? Because huge color is such a huge element for me, it color creates a mood, it creates texture, it creates dimension, it, color is my thing, right? And so because it's so important, I don't, I like to do a lot of pre-work. So when I come sit down to create, I'm not, it's not a stressful, it's not a, it's a very peaceful environment because this part of the equation has already been dealt with. And so what I do without further ado is I create um, some recipe cards. I have a color cookbook and I uh, will tell you a little bit more about that at the very end that I come to for inspiration and the color schemes are already in here. And so then I'll just kind of flip through and say, okay, that's the one I want to work with. Then I go and pick out the colors and I go from there. And so with a little pre-work, uh, this can uh, propel your art in a whole new direction, right? I get lots of comments on the various social media sites about my color palettes and my use of color. But honestly, it only comes because I have done a lot of pre-work so that when, when I sit down to create, I already kind of know what colors go together, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to take you on a little journey. Um, please go ahead and like and subscribe. This is the kind of stuff I do on my channel and I would love for you to join me and be a part of my community. Step one is find an inspiration piece. Second step is leverage your phone. Your phone is a very powerful art tool. So here I am taking one of my pictures that I created. I figured that'd be the easiest way. But we'll take a picture I created and I'm screenshotting it. I'm editing it down so that I just focus on the image. And you can do all this in your phone. Uh, I'm actually using an iPhone, so it's that's what I'm using. <laughs> and then I'm going to um, open up this beautiful app called Color Snap, and I'll put that in the description box. But Color Snap, the reason I like it is because it's very easy. And so you go into Color Snap, you tell you want to do the uh, match a photo. And right now, what you see me doing is, is I'm allowing it to do its thing. What it does is it picks, selects colors from the image. Now I need some more contrast in my image and because it is a jelly print, some of the colors will blend and mix. And so I am just picking out the colors that I need. And that those dark uh, circles in the center are not black. They have been neutralized because I put a turquoise on top of an orange, but I know that it's a blue. And so I'm trying to help the help the tool find areas that are still blue. And so 
You see me just tweaking and playing until I find a palette that I like, that has enough contrast and enough diversity in the colors that is something I want to work with. Now, black and white for me are a given in any palette. And so I don't spend too much time putting them in there, but I'll put it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, save the palette. We'll give it a name. Uh, that just keeps it for future reference in this app, in the app, because I will actually sometimes come back to the app to just use some of the palettes that I've saved. And I think I'm going to call this one like bright. And then I realized that bright was kind of bright to me is like hot pink. So I'm going to go with a bold red as my title or something like that. Yep. Red bold is what we're going to call this one. And I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to do a screenshot. I, I'm kind of I'm just trying to show you multiple ways to capture this image. So I'm going to do a screenshot and I'm also going to do a share, uh, share your palette because then you get this cute little branded color snap, uh, Sherwin Williams or whatever his name is, <laughs> um, picture, but I like it because the dimensions are right and it prints really well. So I am then I'm going to print it. I'm going to print this on a four by six project life card or sometimes I print it on four by six photo paper because I'm actually going to use the image um, as my viewfinder to match paints later. So this is here, you see me go into the print option and then that is how we make our little tool. The next step is the fun step and that's the matching of the paint. So as I mentioned, I print out this little card on a four by six card and then I turn it into a um, viewfinder basically I just cut little holes and little square holes so that I can see the paint the next phase is the fun phase I take my little viewfinder I walk around my studio and I select paints um, sometimes I will just match the paints to the actual bottles or I will just pull a bunch of paints um, and then like make a bucket. And other times I will take these little sheets. I call these my um, my swatch boards. They're hung up on my wall in my studio. I took them down for for this video. But I will just map, take the viewfinder, and place the little viewfinder over these little these little swatches and see what matches. And then go to do the shopping. So it's kind of a mixed bag how I use the tool. But either way, I'm I'm taking my viewfinder and matching paint. And so I have selected three types of paints, some craft paints, some art alchemy acrylic paints, which are these metallics, and then some goldens. The next step is to build the swatches. And, and so I'm going to just put down these little dots on here to make my little swatch card. My little swatch cards are actually um, three by four project life cards, or sometimes I will use watercolor paper Today, these Project Life cards happen to be nearby. And so I'm using a little, um, what is those things called? Um, color shaper, a little spatula type thing to put this paint on. I'm trying to keep it in the order that it's on the viewfinder. So that makes it easy to use when I'm actually matching it up. I'm going to let it dry. And here I'm pulling out the Art Alchemy paints. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried the Art Alchemy paints by Finnebar, but they are gorgeous acrylic paints. They're very smooth. They're very, um, they're high pigmented. They're really a great paint. And um, they have, I love all things metallic. And so they have enough pigment that they are true to color, but they also have this little bitty sparkle and sheen in it. So I, I'm a big fan of them. And again, I'm just making the swatches. I realized from the last time that it's kind of hard to make sure the paints don't touch. And so that's why I'm skipping uh, colors just so that I can allow myself a little space so that colors don't do too much mixing. And because I am known to either dip my shirt in the paint or knock paint over, I'm trying to be diligent and put the tops back on. Okay, so I, here I am putting out my craft paints. I'm going to have a little a situation as um, I know that 
that is supposed to be a turquoise, although my viewfinder is telling me it's a blue. And so I'm trying to pick the right kind of turquoise. And I think this is a forever search with turquoise, is to try to find the perfect turquoise. So anyway, I'm just sampling out some colors. I'm looking at them. You're going to see me do some color mixing over here, trying to find a right color. And that's half the fun too, right? But for giggles, I also brought out the blue that matches more like um, the viewfinder. And I just, it was a no-go. <laughs> and so I'm still trying up. And ultimately, I result to using a Blick metallic teal because, again, a girl loves all things metallic. And the Blick um, acrylic paints are really nice. I have uh, several of them in uh, the Blick matte, which you're actually going to see me use in the red. Oh, yeah. This this card becomes a no-go card, but don't worry, nothing is lost in my world. I'm going to use that card later for my notes or something. So let's just start over. And so um, I cleaned my little um, scraper off because I'm using a color shift. Now, if you have never used the color shifts by Folk Art, they are amazing. But they act primarily as a glaze, right? So they, they add this great sheen and shimmer and do these amazing effects um, to paint. But they don't really provide great coverage. And so I am going to use a Blick. And um, here I've decided apparently to switch to my paintbrush. Because it was with craft paints, the scraper, the, the scraper or the... Um, silicone thing was scraping too much and so they weren't coming out very thick and I wanted it thick so you can see the color and so my paintbrush was allowing me to get more of the color so that's why I started using a paintbrush for the craft paints and I think all of that just comes with playing over time you see me here showing you what I'm doing I'm going to wait for them to dry I let them dry so um, now that all the paint has dried, I'm just going to put them out the way because we don't need to see them anymore. Well, we're going to we're going to see them in a minute, but we'll just kind of move our little collection out the way. Um, OK, so our paints have dried and we have three samples. <laughs> yeah, that's about that's the problem with craft paint. OK, so. Um, now I need to label these, right? And I will label these before I put my paints away. But they have dry, but I wanted you to see the difference, right? And so again, we have our little um, viewfinder inspiration card and I made the little viewfinder thing. And I put them in the order. So black and white are givens, right? And so really we're matching up like that. We're trying to match up so like that's the red, that's the yellow, that's the orange, that's the red. And then in this picture, it they picked a blue. But I know, right, because I made this, that it's actually a turquoise, which is interesting. Online, people thought that was a black, but it really is a deep turquoise. But... So I kind of cheated, but if we were really just deconstructing, we would have tried this and then maybe we would have said, you know what, maybe that's not the right, the right hue because of the color wheel. And I'm going to show you what I do next, right? But I just wanted to show you how, um, when we look at the colors, how they, they ended up matching, they end up matching up. That one's a little less yellow than maybe it needed to be. The orange is a nice orange. This one, orange is nice. And then that blue. And so this is the craft paint. And the red, sorry, the red is, is okay. The yellow is like spot on. The orange is nice. And the second orange is nice. And then this last blue. Okay, so... Oftentimes I get asked, well, Rachel, do I need the expensive golden or, you know, I, I'm not, um, I like, I like paint, right? But it's important to know what you get with each kind of paint, right? And so, um, craft paint, it, it's, as you see, it's very matte in this case, it's very matte. I had, if you remember, I had to paint it very thick to get a thick color. Um, 
but it's perfectly fine, especially for jelly printing. Now, if I'm planning to sell it, oftentimes I don't use um, the craft in solo or in isolation. So I might actually take, and Blick is a good craft paint, right? I might take this Blick and mix it with some golden because I really don't like colors that are flat. I like to see some variation. And so I might actually mix all three of these reds on my plate, okay? Or I might mix, you know, so I, I play, I mix, but I wanted you to see the concept of how I use this card to to back into a palette. So I take an inspiration piece, I go on the app, I make a viewfinder, and then I try to just I try to pull from my my collection to figure out which ones, what paints match. Now, um, I mentioned that because I created this, I know that that really is a turquoise, and when I made this, I made it. It was a, it's a jelly it's a jelly print uh, that is done in multiple layers, and so I knew that there is like a bubble wrap in red or orange paint over here, and then there is a, like a and there's a red pool, and then there's a yellow pool, and then there's a turquoise pool on top because I made that. But you could try to play detective and deconstruct that like I, I think that's half fun sometimes if I am not feeling too inspired but I to do something of my own <laughs> sometimes I will say okay well let's play detective and see if we can deconstruct the piece to find out what they did right so now why do I also know that this is turquoise or how could I've gotten a better clue ah our handy dandy um uh, color wheel now I have a I have so many of these, right? But let's just take, um, we are going to figure out why this works. Now, what we see here in these three colors, these three colors in the middle are an analogous um, color scheme. Meaning they're all, they're all, they're like, they're brothers and sisters. They're all like right here, right? They're or the yellow orange, the orange yellow, which is kind of like that, or maybe that's okay. The so we have our color wheel, and a part of this deconstruction exercise, or still like an artist, is to figure out well why does why does this piece work like why, and so what we see is you've got you've got in these colors, in these colors you've got they're all right next to each other. You got a red and orange red, a red orange or orange yellow. So that is called an analogous uh, color scheme, right? There's harmony, there's harmony right here. They're all kind of in the same family. They get along well because they're neighbors. They live They live next to each other. They're sisters or cousins or something. So they, they all get along well. Now what, what's interesting is this color right here. So one of the ways we can figure out why this works so well is, okay, so we know we're somewhere in here and if we were to do the complementary or the contrast color, it would need to be, let's figure out what our pure color is. So our pure color, like, okay, if we thought this was the blue that it was, right? Then our, let me just show you how to use this. If we thought the blue was really the blue, then our, our pure color would be orange because across from orange is this blue. And so that would say that, that we have a, a yellow orange, we have an orange, we have a red orange, and we have a red. And so that's why it could work, right? So then the blue across would actually work because it the orange would be our base color. The, if that was just a pure orange with no tint or bias toward red or toward yellow, then the solid blue the pure blue would be the complementary, the exact opposite, the contrasting color. And so that's why even on this palette here, it works. But I know that this is not a pure orange. It is a more of a red orange. And because I know it's a red orange, if this is my pure color, when I do go for a contrast, it's right across. And so that's how I knew that this is really a green blue. And this is, this is what makes this piece pop. I wish you can see it because if you look right in here, right in there, that is actually the green 
the green blue. It's a turquoise green blue color. It's not a deep blue like the picture they have here. But would you be wrong if you had gone with the blue? No. And the reason why it worked is because it's saying that this orange is a pure orange. Now, sometimes um, when you're deconstructing, it may not, it may not uh, come out like this. But what I like to do is try to figure out why it works. And that's where how I use my wheel, I, my color wheel. I look at it.
Okay, so all of these pieces at least have four or five layers, right? And um, for me, this is where the fun begins. So what I do normally every week is I will do a jelly printing session like this. And so now I have these amazing rich backgrounds that have one, two, three, four, five beginning layers. And then if you know my work, you know by the time I finish, I'll have put another six, seven, or eight layers down on top of these. But this is how my process starts. Now, if you noticed, I don't do a lot of planning. There's really no rhyme or reason how I build these pages up. I guess there is, right? So if I were to get quiet, what I do is I start light to dark, right? So in this case, I started with my lightest color, which was a white, and then I went yellow, and then I went orange, and then I went red, and then I went turquoise, right? And so I went light to dark, and each piece along the way got um, some paint. I'm just gonna show them to you again while I talk so that they had the full color scheme and the full spectrum. And I wasn't worried too much about how the pieces work together because I knew that the color scheme worked together, right? And so like, like this one, someone might say, well, Rachel, this one is, you've got this beige color in here. And I technically like it because it gives the eye a place to rest, right? But while I'm making it, if you re if you remember, <laughs> Fast and Furious, I am going for it. I will kick this back with some black and some white and maybe some more, um, I will actually st stencil paint on. Um, so, but this, see, these are my backgrounds and they're four or five layers of backgrounds and I just love that one, right? Um, love this one too love the intensity and the depth in this one this is probably my favorite piece of the group and so for me what happens now is i have a nice pile of backgrounds what is that 20 i don't know it looks like about 20 or so backgrounds that i will now start to build up and so what happens next is i will keep out my stencils but instead of jelly printing or mono printing to get the texture on I will treat it as a background and I will take my stencils first I always use my stencils before my stamps I'll take my stencils and I might then just you know stencil paint onto the onto each of them and I I go <laughs> and I use up all the paint that I pour out on my jelly print and I'll just give each piece a little of something and I'll make my way through the pile with that step, with the step of adding paint through stencils on. And then I'll uh, come back and do my next step, which is to add stamps on it. And I do them 20 at a time as well. <laughs> and then I'll come back and the final step is then I just do some pen and um, paint pen and marker, mark making. And then, then my, my images are, they're complete. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this process of me making these backgrounds. And I, 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 I don't apologize for going so fast. That is the way I work. I am listening. I am in the flow. And there's a freedom that exists in moving that fast. And I know 
as a viewer it's hard because you want to know well what did she use and what stencil did she use um and honestly uh you know i'm not really focused on too much on the design of the stencils as much as i am about the color and getting some harmony and balance on on my on my page for my backgrounds getting some layers like this piece alone i i I don't know how many it has all the colors on here and it has all the layers it has you know you see the the marks here you see this blue glaze you see this green that we created you see this stencil here um, but it's just so rich and deep anyway I hope you enjoyed it I hope you follow along I will I will film part two of this um, so that you can see how I take these backgrounds and add stencils and and stamps onto them and how I finish them off um, so I just encourage you to hit that like subscribe ask a ton of questions if you want to um, if something if I was going way too fast and you needed some clarification on something I was doing or what I was thinking I am excited and delighted to help thank you so much bye bye okay so we are back so now the next step after we have played and had fun and we've created what we're going to create with our colors i usually like to take a sample of something one piece that would be the guy outside cutting the grass i usually like to take a piece and put it in my binder so let me show you my cookbook i'm not going to go into too much detail but if you're interested please let me know if you are interested in how i make my color cookbook or if you're interested in like all of these um color tools that i have i would love to do a video on them i just need to know if that's something people are interested in because i have a lot of i have a lot of resources a lot of books if you're interested in how i made my color charts that go on my wall in my studio i could tell you about that just let me know okay now let's focus okay so I have um, a little six by eight. Um, I just and I kept the thing on because I just wanted you to be able to see one of my old Project Life snap binders. I just went and got it because I had them. Because then when I was doing Project Life, I had all the stuff, <laughs> and 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 um, it is filled with it is filled with recipe cards. Okay, so what I do. And the best way, since I'm not in my overhead camera, is I'm just going to do like a little show and tell, right? So you'll see. Um, sometimes I make a big swatch card. If Like this is a signature palette for me. And so I have a big swatch card with it. But these are actually brayered on as opposed to paint brushed on. And then here is my card. I'm going to take it out so you can see it. But I just wanted you to give you a quick glimpse of some of the stuff that's that's in my color binder, my color cookbook. And if you're interested, please let me know, okay? Okay, so what I have done, if you remember, we made these little cards. These are the swatch cards we made. I have put them in a six by eight sleeve and on the back of each card, let me just take them out. On the back of each card, I have the names of the paints. Right. So if I want to pull this color scheme, I just know what it, I know what it is. And I always put the brand and the color. And then I have a little sleeve for notes. And so my note here says this is an, an, an al analogous color scheme. The pure color is red orange and the contrast is the green blue. And on um, what I found works best is light to dark with this color scheme. And, and then I meant another note is that the turquoise over the orange will neutralize and appear black. So those are my notes. I put it in my little binder. I put it away. And now when next time I want to, I'm looking for a color scheme that I know works. Uh, I just grab that color scheme because I know that color scheme works. I hope that helped. Again, it was such a pleasure. Please continue on the hop. Enjoy meeting each of the ladies 
I don't know if there's any guys, if there is a guy in meeting all the ladies and the, and, the, and the fellas, but I think it's all ladies. So just enjoy meeting everyone on the hop and have a great day. Bye-bye.